Hi YouTube. I am back again. Believe it or not, I made this video on Friday and it did have some music on it just for two minutes or so. And the video has been uploading for since Friday at seven o'clock. So it's been over 26 hours. So I'm going to redo it without any music. And I want to, you know, hold up my word when I said I was going to do a, a chapter. And what I'm going to do is just read different chapters from different, uh, I mean, different books on this channel. I'll try to upload them on Saturday. Okay, now, we're going to continue with this book. Powerful Quotes. I'm, I'm, what I'm, when I do like this, I'm trying to upload it on my cell phone too because i don't know if it's the browser on my computer that's acting crazy i don't know my laptop so i'm filming on my cell phone also but this is the book powerful quotes <laughs> harold e Tolliver. and remember we're still going to do this book the book of answers by carol boat Think of a question you might have, and we'll see what the answer says. I believe last week we stopped. Yeah, it was chapter, we finished chapter one. So now we're going to talk about chapter two, and we're going to read. It's not that long. No, not long at all. But the name of the chapter is Universal Laws and Freedom. The introduction says, we see that God, as a creative force, the universal force, the totality of all laws, seeing all of life in his universal expression, conforms and understands and has the law of compassion constantly in attention because man expresses God through his five senses. And God sees through the eyes of the world, not limited to man, but to all creatures, great and small. That was a pretty long, do you know I said all of that in one sentence? That was a long sentence. Wow. Okay, I hope you understand it. <laughs> Jesus' true mission in this world was not to save us from hell, but to be a role model so perfect that we ourselves become our own saviors. His work was to teach us cosmic law and that the kingdom of heaven is within us. Kingdom of heaven is within us. This creative force does have fixed laws, yet it does not judge man in any way shape or form for man and his total idea of life is a balanced expression of all creative force so there is no judgment true religion is founded on a knowledge of the law of affinity when you know this law, then you know that you must love God and think about him. Not because it says so in the Bible, but because there is an absolute law which says that the true beneficiary of that love is yourself and through you the whole world. The law of mind, according to metaphysical teaching, when the creation took place, it was done through the process of thought, also called the mind of the deity. In the Christian Holy Bible, this is called the Word of God. So thought is the Word of God. Words are the physical manifestation of thoughts and produce a vibration just as thinking does. Therefore, by medical, metaphysical interpretation, when one deity, which is 
a vast unknown void of energy to the infinite human mind began to create the worlds. It was done through vibration. The Bible calls that vibration are setting atoms into motion to create a world. Metaphysics calls it thought. So that is a law of the mind. And vibrations move, create the world through words, but words come from thought. Let's continue. The law of mind means that there exists a universal intelligence which is a substance without form. It is sometimes called the mind of God. You share this mind substance with the deity and all other creatures. The purpose of the mind substance is for you to co-create with the creator. You do this by impressing it with thought images, which if expressed strongly enough with your desires and well-formed visualization will manifest into physical form. The universal mind substance is a gift to you from the deity to allow you to create what you need and desire. I, I used to well, when I used to get out and do things and working and doing stuff like that, but I used to manifest through my words. There was a time, I might, in another video, I talked about this tree. This tree was on the path everywhere I went, uh, going to the apartment and leaving, but you had to get off the path. And this big tree was just in the way. My younger son said, Mama, quit complaining about the tree. Everybody else get off the path and go around the tree. The tree was here before you got here. But I, I just, oh, I couldn't help it. One day, we came in from work in the evening about 7 o'clock. The tree was there. I'm complaining, but I go around the tree. The next morning, we would leave the house about 7 o'clock. We get there, the tree is gone. It's like, what happened to the tree? My son said, Mommy, you, you wanted the tree gone, so it's gone. But we didn't, I didn't hear any sawing or anything. And, and we, I looked on the ground. You could see uh, maybe a stump, but it was so flat. I, I'm on the ground rubbing to see what, how in the world. But I said this every time I saw that tree, that it, I, it doesn't need to be here. Okay, the tree is gone. There was a time when I would tell my, my youngest son, I guess he might, must be my witness or something. I tell him all the time, I'm going to get me a brand new car off the showroom floor and I'm not going to pay for it <laughs> with my money. That's what I say. I'm not going to have no car note. I'm not going to pay for it with my money. I said, Mama, you are crazy. You have got to pay for a car. He ignored me. And I know I said this for about three years, not every day, but every six months, I would say that. If I saw a brand new car, I said, well, I'm going to get me a brand new car, but I'm not going to have a car note, and the money is not coming out of my pocket. Okay, I, that did happen. I ended up getting a, a, a lawsuit from having Simonelle pause it. With that money, I was able to buy <laughs> a brand new car off the showroom floor. But this, that I'm thinking about that when our desires to manifest stuff. It says you can do this by impressing it with thought images. And I, I knew I wanted a black car and I knew I, I didn't want a car, but I wanted an SUV and I got just what I wanted. It said you do this by impressing it with thought images which is, if impressed strongly enough with your desires and well-formed visualizations will manifest into physical form. So it happened. I'm, I'm sure you all have done that before. And sometimes we forget. We, we get what we want if we manifest it, you know, you call it out and speak it into being. Okay, we're going to talk about another law. 
This is called, let me see what, okay, we're doing pretty good. The law of giving and receiving. You always have to give in order to receive. And that means emotionally and mentally as well as physically. If you cannot give compliments and love to others, you have not sent any energy forth to receive them because you have not sent forth or opened a channel to receive. So when you give, you're opening that same channel to receive. It's all a one way in and one way out thing. Huh, okay, that makes sense. The existence of this law ensures you that as much as you give, you will also receive, and often many times that over. But I wonder, can you just give, give with that in your mind? Uh, I'm going to give this so I can get this back. I don't think it works like that. I, I, You have to give with, it's got to be some love in there somewhere. I, didn't, I don't remember reading love. Uh-uh. It didn't say anything about love. Hmm. Okay. Well, if, if you're going to do that, you might as well go to the slot and just give, 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 and <laughs> receive, receive. Re it, it. I don't know. I got to think about that. Okay. The next law. The law of attraction dictates everything in your life, good or bad. Nothing happens by coincidence or accident. If you are constantly worried that you are going to have a car wreck, then you will most likely get in a car wreck. If you fear more than anything about being robbed, then you will most likely get robbed. Nothing happens by chance. We attract whatever we focus on most and give the most feeling to. Now, this is so true. After I uh, stopped uh, running my own business, I took a job at Home Depot because my kids used to call me Home Depot Queen. Oh, God, I loved Home Depot, and I was so happy to work there. I was working the flooring department. And there was a lot of lifting and doing things, and I, ooh, sometimes I would say, ooh, I'm going to hurt my back oh, doing this. And I should have said, I need to be careful so I won't hurt my back. And you know what happened? I hadn't been there seven months. And I hurt my back working at Home Depot. And that's what, you know, I started my back problem. So you have to be careful. The law of attraction. I attracted that. And it still goes back to the uh, saying it. By me saying it, I made that happen, and I attracted it to me. The same way with the car. I said it, I attracted it to me. That's, they are connected together. Okay, let me continue. The law of return applies to money, services, thoughts, words, action, and emotions. In America, we speak of living in a free country. But are we really free? Are we, are we free to be who we really are? The answer is no. We are not free. True freedom has to do with the human spirit. It is the freedom to be who we really are. Who really stops us from being free? We stop ourselves. Okay. Nobody can give you freedom. Nobody can give you equality or justice or anything. If you are a man, you take it. Malcolm X. God gave man a law, not religion. From the beginning of history, all the world's major problems have been caused by man-made religions. And that's so true. Man-made religions. What has happened is that we have the book of law, the big judge, and the victim who rules our lives. We are no longer free because judge, the victim, and the belief system 
don't allow us to be who we really are. Once our minds have been programmed with all that garbage, we are no longer happy. Yeah, because you know, they say we have freedom of speech, and that's, that's not really true because, <laughs> no, that's not true. Because you got all these hate things, you can't say things, and uh, no, nah, it's not really, we're not really free. The next one says, we are living on vib- vibrational energy, the law of divine oneness. We must learn to live in harmony with divine law before we can become masters of our destiny and before we can control the affairs and functions of our lives. Enlightenment does not come to us by belief or what another does, but by our own efforts to embrace universal laws. That is the great divine law. Both Jesus and Buddha taught only cosmic law rather than varied doctrine and philosophies. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it would be cosmic law. Seek truth, demand truth, and it shall be given to you. This is a universal law. And to know and use this understanding and wisdom. This is a universal law. And to know and use this understanding is wisdom. Hmm. You know, we want to have wisdom, but got to have understanding with it, too. There is a law of grace which will, which will exist. There is a law of grace that will exist. But because he paid for your sins and because you would accept him, as being worthy and perhaps a messenger of God. The law of grace deals with God's love for you, not because he died for your sins. Hmm. I guess these are, this is for the, the Christians who, you know, I, I, I used to believe that, that Christ died for my sins and blah, 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 blah. And I don't know, I, I, I choked. I can't digest like that like I used to. But I do know it's God's grace. The almighty God. Or it's, it's a grace that I cannot give myself that has me here right now. It's grace because I should not be here. It's the grace of God. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the law of love. Love is the law of the universe. He that is in love is in God. (laughs) Before the fall, we only live by the divine law. The sum of all the law in the world is truth. Hmm. We don't hardly get the truth now. We must sincerely live by the divine law, spiritually, mentally, and materially. We are here to retain our divine awareness, which we once held prior to our fall from the Garden of Eden. Okay, that's, that's, you still have, these are for believers in the Bible, okay? A general definition of karma is the universal law of balance of cause and effect. Cause and effects. Everything good and bad must be repaid or balanced out. That's kind of like when you um work on a till and at the end of the day, you got to balance out. The, your tickets say you made uh, $2,000 and when you count it, you better have $2,000. That's, that's the law of karma, huh? Okay. Okay, let's see where we start. Life in society is based on the law of exchange. Give and takes, and this applies on all levels of life, physical, psychological, and spiritual. This law of exchange is called justice. You take something for yourself, and you give it equivalent in exchange. 
if you can maintain if you can maintain a right balance between what you take and what you give then you are just hmm okay i never thought about it like that just is when the skills are balanced okay justice okay okay i understand justice should be understood as liberation freedom hmm you tell me oh i'm at 20 minutes anytime we break the law of nature we are doing harm to ourselves the disorder in the world is because mankind is out of harmony with the laws of god and all the darkness of our own ignorance and in harmony in our own true nature hmm darkness what is sin there is only one sin of imbalance the lack of harmony with the laws of god's nature of god's nature the great law of life is the law of cause and effect karma let me see how many more pages do i have Okay. I thought maybe we could, maybe, yeah, we can read. If I quit talking, just read. <laughs> okay. Darkness is focused on the human consciousness, which is detained to become light. Darkness shall lose because nothing can exist without light. Let me read it again. Darkness is focused on the human consciousness, which is detained to become light hmm. darkness shall lose because nothing can exist without light okay your mental attitude is a key to controlling the law of attraction the thing to remember when it comes to law of attraction is that it is going to happen whether we are aware of it or not it has happened your entire life. You've attracted every situation or circumstance you've ever been in. You attract every person, place, or event that injects life, whether you purposely mean it or not. Laws have been grafted into religious writings. These laws have been made by men to enforce respect for governments and laws which were purely human. Yeah, that these laws that man made is for control. What we think, believe, and say and do will have a corresponding effect on others in the world around us. This is the supreme law over others. Allow your thoughts the freedom of beauty, love, desire, and free and give freely to all now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom second corinthians the third chapter and the first verse okay we're gonna end on that one okay our, our next chapter is who is jesus we're at 23 minutes so let's let's do the book my question is oh my uh, my situation with love I'm, I'm learning how to forgive and love and my question is am i oh am i getting anywhere because i i when people do things to me and then i'll forgive them forgive them and then this thing come back in my head and there i am bringing that up so my question is how do i forget the wrong that people have done to me so how do i forget that as this may be such a far-fetched answer but that's what i struggle with right now get rid of that struggle it's gonna be another struggle they always say this is one thing or another so get your question in your mind. I'm just going to go through. Uh, let's stop there. This book's so ragged. <laughs> I can even glue it back together. I can't see it. Let me turn around and see what it says. 
realize that too many choices is as difficult to do as too few. Realize that too many choices is as difficult as too few. Hmm, too many choices. Oh, so too many choices. I, I, I got to think about that. Too many choices. Because sometimes we do want more choices. Oh, messing up. But I guess if you just have two things to choose from, y'all, that's easy. Okay. Well, anyway, we had almost 25 minutes. I'm going to end, guys. And I'm going to try to upload this again. I hope it works. But anyway, we'll try to see you next week. I'm not going to say Saturday because it looks like it'll be Sunday before I get this uploaded. But I'll see you next week. How about that? Bye-bye.